Aloha, I'm Joshua Cooper, and welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around our world on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, and Moana Nui Akea. Today's episode is focusing on Ho'ulu Lahaina March by Lele Lahaina, focusing on unity and love for Aina, family, and community. Today, we're joined by the main activists and advocates that were coming together to express their love for this Aina, and I really want to thank them all for everything they did but also to be able to share their wisdom as we reflect on that sacred day. Keamoku, could you share with me why this whole Ulu Lahaina March was so important to you, the community, and even the world? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, when everything started from the beginning, we we're kind of a little bit segmented all over the place and trying to figure out what we can do for our community abroad. Um, I'm for one that just dove in and tried to figure out how we can uh, adjust the needs of the community at that time. And I know a lot of us did, but um, it's about uh, bringing everybody's values together. No matter what the situations are, no matter the trials and tribulations that we face, I think unity is the most important thing that we need to really grasp on to, especially when you're dealing with not just uh, Native Hawaiian community, but the multi-generational family that have been living in Lahaina for many, many generations. To assure them that, you know, there is a place for all of us in society. And sometimes we got to put our differences aside so we can go forward and focus on what is really important. And that's a kako issue that we are here for everyone, not just certain people, but everyone, all over, no matter where. Throughout Lahaina, a lot of people that lost everything um we have to kind of stay persistent and be that guiding light to assure the general community abroad that there are people that really care and we, we for one you know i know we, we all share the same values so that's one of the reasons why we got involved is to make sure that it's a kako issue mahalo maka can you share with us a little bit on why it's important to you you know, so I just wanted to say thank you for this opportunity, Josh. Um, and I'm just going to segue right into what Kiyomoku was saying. And I'm sure that we all have pretty much the same um, experience and, and purpose. So, um, yes, when this fire um, hit our town, our homes, um, it was so, because it's unprecedented. So when this this fire hit our community, there was a lot of uncertainties. There was a, there was a lot of um, um, unsure of what tomorrow is going to look like. So uh, what was important was for this Ho'olu, so mahalo to Lele Aloha for organizing this Ho'olu Lahaina March. Because for me, the importance was to bring our kupuna, to bring our makua, our opio, and our keiki. And that's exactly what we had. We had our kupuna walking. We had our makua walking. We had our, um, we had our keiki, our opio, and our keiki. Everyone was walking in unity, and that's what it was. It was a lokahi march, and um, just to see everyone marching together just gave our whole community that ray of light of hope. That we are, like Kim Hussein, we come from such a diverse community, but so many of us either came off on canoe, and the same families came off even one ship, our kupuna. So it was for me the importance was having this unity march so that the world can see that our community is very resilient and we are still here in unity. Mahalo, Josh. Absolutely. It was definitely somber. It was definitely sacred and it was also stupendous to see people all marching together and the different aspects along the march as well. Kaliko, can you share with us some of your insights and why it was so important? Uh, it was important uh, to give our ch my ch children the opportunity to see, the opportunity to hear, the opportunity to engage um, and it was important for us to be there to support our kupuna Many of them did not want to ride. Most of them wanted to walk. And without even asking why, you could just see the, the strength in them 
And so the important part was that when they turn either left or right, that I would be or we would be there to support them. And so the, that was very important to me. Really appreciate that. And Archie, can you share why you believe it was so important for you, for our community, and even the world to have this event as we go forward? Well, I think um, what I saw and what I was feeling from this community was the need hey, to the need to believe in something and the need. Um, what I saw was a need to be unified. I, I saw our community uh, being in a place of, um, to be quite honest, somewhat uh, separated. We needed to find a way to unite this community. And, um, you know, that's not easy to do, um, especially when you lose everything. Everything's at the surface. Some things aren't as pleasant as... Um, as others may think. And so just really, really trying to pay attention to the community and seeing that I wanted us to get into a place of, not a place of blame, but of being more solution-based. And I I thought and I hope that this, this unity gathering would put us in that mindset of, of um, not blame, but um, solutions and the need for me personally to see people that I've never seen since day one of the fire. How important that was to rekindle those relationships. When, you know, the week before the march is a really trying time. But days before the march, when we put up all the flags, not just the Hawaiian flag, but flags from all the people that perished in our community. That was confirmation that, you know what, no matter what, no matter what, that's how important this is. It brought to light, it brought to surface, the surface about um, the divisions that we have in this community. But it also brought to light that we all have the same concerns. We're all trying to get to the same place. And sometimes um, maybe we don't share the, the exact same vision, but we're all trying to end up in the same place. That's how important this unity gathering was. And I cannot tell you how many people came up to me and said, thank you. <clears throat> Oh, so Thank you okay. for allowing me to believe. Mahalo, Archie. And seeing everyone here today, all mm -hmm. the memories come back over the past six months from really everyone doing everything and the stories that will never be told about all that the four of you did to make sure that everybody had their basic needs met, to coordinate together campaigns, to be able to create the hubs, to be able to take care of one another. And, of course, thinking about all the actions that everyone has done in those six months. And when you said about seeing each other again, it reminds me of when President Biden did visit, because that was also the first time many people met. And to see everyone, to have the music, to have the Ono grinds, see everybody stand up and just spontaneously do the hula, and everybody coming together again, it's what you're sharing, Archie, about that sense of being able to come home. Maybe we can build on what Archie was sharing a bit. And Kiyomoku, can you share maybe a highlight of the day with the march and some aspect for people who weren't there? Because as he did allude to it, there was always that, that gentle breeze. There was also the mist. There was the flower drop. There was everyone <laughs> through the march. There were the cultural moments along the way with the hula halau, as well as the Hokulea and the many Jingva'a, the Boyjing canoe out there. Can you share with some people some highlights of the day for you? Yeah, I think the highlight of the day for us um, was uh, when we got there, you know, basically we try to malama as much as we can, you know, that 
kind of moo moo, yeah. So we kind of knew that that's kind of the reason why we got all our vehicles together to try to contribute to that. And, um, you know, it, it was kind of wild in the beginning. I mean, uh, one thing I'm never going to forget is that, you know, all of a sudden we had our hardships in the past, but then I got um, kind of chosen to escort our mayor, uh, Mike Victorino. So it was a good opportunity for me and, you know, in the presence of Mike to kind of talk about the days when he was um, in charge of the realm. And, um, you know, we had an opportunity to really iron situations out on, you know, Lahaina alone, because a long time we've kind of advocated for good changes in our community. And it gave us an opportunity to sit down. And I drove in from the beginning all the way to the end. And a lot of my guys, uh, from Nikon and Maui also contributed by just escorting and taking a lot of the kupuna that we knew that, you know, couldn't make the four-hour uh, march and catering to a lot of the, the kamali as well, a lot of the babies from, you know, five and under. And I think the highlight of the moment was when we got to certain areas, especially when the, the protocol was going on by the different halaos, that was um, powerful. That was very a uh, very powerful moment. Then throughout the whole duration, watching the canoes approach the shore, and you know, it's a very very touching moment for a lot of us. Man, mahalo to Ohana Ba'a to our people still hearing a lot of this that went on. Because although that we many times are so agitated with different kinds of politics that, that is happening. This march was the highlight moment for not just myself, but a lot of our um, cultural monitors gave us a good opportunity to, one, for one, have a day off. Because we've been cranking, we've been cranking it seven days a week, 10 hours a day. And being able to take a little time out to think about a lot of things. You know, I had over 35, 36 of our culture monitors not only on the field, but it was great to have this time off so they can also be with their ohana um, in service of the community as we are in the field. But, you know, just experience everything that would happen. I think this was a success. It was a great success. Yes. And although there's Sometimes when things get kind of a little bit complicated, I'm normally the one that, you know, try to see if we can ease that tension in many ways. But it was great. The whole event um, shall always be remembered because we're in difficult times. And we needed this in order to kind of reel everything back in, to reanalyze and resituate ourselves and give us time, more time enough to think. So Mike Victorino was kind of a real good closure for myself. And I give his wife credit, Auntie Jocelyn, because I told her, you want to ride? And she said, no, I'm going to walk all the way. And she did. And I looked at Mike and I said, man, now I know who wear the pants in our family. <laughs> That's that awesome. And now we know Kamoka's got a new title, The Tension oh. Eater. I don't think we ever heard that before. So, new <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're going to remember that. So, mahalo. There's a lot of things that I can kind of recollect that was, you know, magical. It was very magical. So, thank you. Mahalo. Makalapu, I know you were emceeing. You were doing many things. Could you share with us some of the highlights of the day? You know, some of the highlights was, um, you know, just being there and walking with our Kaya Ulu, walking with our Kupuna, um, and then being told, like, auntie, your kuleana is to watch the governor. I was like, you get plenty of people watching him already. How come I got to watch him too? No, you have to be there. I got to be with the governor. So I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, we have to learn how to be obedient listeners and do as we are told. So um, I, I took on that kuleana. And uh, in the process of 
you know, having these wonderful protocols. Um, and I know that, you know, whether it's the state uh, first responders or our county first responders in helicopters that were like hovering around us. And I said, oh my gosh, you know, this is Kelly Raishala, right? That's their halal, they're doing all their protocols with NTDM. So I said, we need to get that bird out of the way. And I didn't realize that people were watching what I was doing. So, you know, that little fan that was being passed out, it's red. So I said, hey, this is red. So I went and stood on the highest rock that I could find overlooking Lahaina Town and just kind of waving them off to like go farther. And they were hovering. And I said, farther away until they flew away. And I didn't realize that people was kind of like watching. And they said, wow, Auntie, that was really something that one big helicopter like that, you would chase them away. I said, I needed for them to move on the side and go away because we have protocols. And you know, when we do the pulleys, we cannot have disturbance because the pulleys go directly to heaven. And that is what our community needed. And then, of course, I get to the stage and doing the MC that awesome protocol where our Ohana Va'a, we never gonna forget that. We're never gonna forget that. And uh, for myself, I'm never gonna forget that. And also just to see the mele, mahalo to um, Pona Mary, as he started to sing Pua Mana. Oh my gosh, our community, we just do what we do. Stand up and all the aunties and all the hula dancers just get on stage and they all started to dance Pua Mana. And I believe, I think it was maybe Archie's mom went on stage and that was like amazing. So just to see our kupuna, our opio, you know, and the hard workers being able to, um, you know, to acknowledge, because it really took an army to put what was done on. So just to highlight their efforts, that was my highlight. To uh -huh. give honor to where honor is due. And that was to all the boots on the ground and they made it all work, so mahalo. There definitely was an Aloha Aina army. Definitely uh -huh. shared when the people come in from the Va'a, you know, Kaliko, you were reading uh, Nainoa. Did you share with us a bit, Kaliko, about your highlights of the day? Uh, you know, <clears throat> our kuleana, anytime the va'a comes in, um, I belong to Pu'ukukui Watershed, and uh, it is it is our kuleana, whether there's a camera or not, uh, anytime the va'a comes into Honolulu Bay, any time of the day, it is our responsibility to post. And so it was no different to us at Launio Poco, but what was special is that they were all there. And... Uh, our crew found it to be an honor uh, to, to make sure that all of our, our co-navigators, our 76ers, that they were well cared for, because that was the kuleana Uncle Archie had given to us. And, uh, and the most memorable moment is when you get the navigator, the Mr. Thompson, off the beach because he wants to hug everybody. You know, he said, I just need to see Archie. I said, okay, he's on an interview. Oh, that's okay. But I got to see Archie. I said, okay, <laughs> then we'll let you go see Archie because none of the boats moved until he got back on. But what was a highlight was when I had taken him back to the beach. And right when he jumped on the jet ski, he could have just jumped on and, and went off. But he shook every one of the watershed guy's hands. And I have it on camera. And that was a highlight to me that every hand doing its share causes our lahui to move forward. And they, the boys weren't expecting it, but on camera, you just watched him handshake all of them and tell them thank you. And so it makes everything we do worth it. Uh, and most importantly, it gives our children an opportunity to, to watch history be made in spite of what looks to be chaotic. And uh, so mahalo to our kupuna here and uh, to our uncles and and my mom, and to you folks for capturing this time of history, and o'ulu kalahui. Mahalo, and definitely we'll never forget the times with Pu Kukui, above mm -hmm. Honolua, the new star compass that's being created, that really, that school to guide the keiki into the future, the keiki okaina, to understand the new way forward. Archie, uh, if you could share with us 
one of the highlights that you had on that day? Well, you know, my highlight was when I saw Kemoku there. When I saw Makalapua there, standing next to me, giving me the strength. Can I tell you guys how much I needed that? That time. Then I remember walking down the hill, Kokio Kyoto Street, and looking back and seeing the masses, flags, the people, and seeing the canoes at the same time. That was like, it was really, really deep. But I think I was really struggling that day. Then when I saw Kemoku, Makalapu told me, we got this, let's do this. Really, really helped me. Then, <clears throat> So everything about that day was so special. Seeing team of Bob Benton, his entire staff, Governor Green said, I will not speak because this is the People's March. I wish people really, really knew How much people care for them in line. Sometimes people forget them. But that day, everybody gave. Everybody gave undividedly. It seemed little, but it was a lot. I just wanted to say thank you. And that's what that day, that, those were the special moments to me on that day. Mahalo, Archie. I, I feel exactly the same way. When you made that turn and you look back, it just looks like it went on infinitely. And everyone there, the flags were furling. And as you came down, as you said, to see all the va'a waiting all together as well, it, it just was one of those moments that will definitely be with us forever. And I agree. Kamoku driving was good. Uh, also to see, Maka, you're the most wonderful, beautiful hosts, bringing one on, encouraging Pono Murray, concluding with Paul Kuga and Jack Johnson as well. And mm. as you shared, everyone's speech, Archie, yours, Kaipo, everyone really did share what was on their mind and it nourished everyone's soul. And we could keep going. I would just ask everyone briefly, if you could start, Kiyomoku, what's your vision for the future? You know, I think uh, there was a time when Archie sounded out, uh, uh, sounded off saying that, you know, we got one, we got one chance to do it right. And most definitely we have the greatest opportunity to not just do it right, but to do it pono. Lahena had been waiting on the bookshelf for many years yep. on how we can assure that what we do for the future generations is going to blossom to the right direction to make sure that we don't overcome a lot of things that you know Lahaina has been blindsided a lot when we start talking about how important Lahaina is Lele is and you know the name is so fitting because you know Sam Kai sums it up perf uh, correctly and perfectly when he says the old name for Lahaina is Malo Ulu Olele. And, you know, from that, you know, that gives us an opportunity to start uh, charting our course, making sure that we stay our course, <clears throat> and we have the opportunity, the greatest, greatest opportunity right now to bring that iconic era back so we can have more respect for our past as our kupuna on the past, and how we need to infuse those values into the by not just 
the vision of the Kanaka, but the vision of the multi-generational families as well. Everybody has a place in our society. They always had. Mm -hmm. And when people kind of shy away from the fact that <clears throat> Hawaii is a kind of a unique place, I always try to remind a lot of people, especially the non-Hawaiian, that if you're here from the time of the crown, then you're subjects. You're subjects to the crown. And that's that's a lot to think about because that's what made us generational within this area, this Bahitana Mona's Malo Ulo Lele. So yeah, we have one shot to do it right. And that always is on the back of my mind when we start talking about, okay, what kind of value should we talk about? What kind of thing should we bring up, bring back? How we can take care of our environment even more because now we start to understand that our environment is necessary. It'll help us down our road to grow, to blossom, to bloom. So this is our opportunity and our future generation is within our hands. So mahalo, mahalo. Mahalo. Mark, if you can share. Here, real quick, you know, so the vision that I have for the future of Lahaina is to have a smart plan. Because when we have a smart plan, then we have a smart plan of action, and then we execute the smart plan. And that's the end result that we get. So what does that plan look like? Well, culturally focused. So when I'm meaning culturally focused, I mean historical, I mean resources, everything that has to do with our home. So culturally focused, community-driven, and government-supported. You know, so really, um, that's the vision that I see is um, someone said, you know, if the waters flow the way it's supposed to flow, this wouldn't have happened. So I see an opportunity here for us to do it right the first time and with the plan. So thank you, Josh. Mahalo. No, oh, mahalo. It really is talking about being really as you said, smart, smart science, community-centered, really, as you said, community-created and government-guaranteed, also very valuable as we look at that vision. Kaliko. Um, <clears throat> the future that I see is that our kupuna very sometime soon is able to watch the first house go up, the first business to return, the water to return in its rightful place, food to be produced and harvested outside of the valleys. That is the vision that I see. And it is definitely, I want to see our kupuna smile and cry as they walk in their home. Mahalo. Archie. So the, the vision I see moving forward for Lahaina is with Hawaiian value. First, foremost, um, we have a lot of great leaders in our community, but our leaders don't make up um, all of what it takes to lead a community. We have to be very diverse. We have to be very inclusive. We have to be um, accept, accepting help from the outside so that. Um, we can we can guide, but we also can take help from others to help us get to where we need to be. The other thing is uh, what I envision for Lahaina is an example for all of Hawaii moving forward. I don't know what that looks like right now. I don't think any of us do because we've been caught up in this westernized way for the last 150 years. But we have enough knowledge around us that can take us down this path, this path to set the course for all of Hawaii. That's my hope. Um, Archie, and I remember you first sharing that at the UN General Assembly when you were meeting with other indigenous leaders virtually. And when you said it, you said that Lahaina is a va'a that if we get Lahaina correct, we could get Hawaii, Hawaii correct, and we could get the world correct because it's been steered off course through different things of commercialism and other aspects that have ignored the culture. And this 
Ho'ulu March really was an example of Article 20 of the peaceful assembly, but it was really also a uniting of all the hearts for a better way forward and a future for everyone. So I want to mahalo you all for the wisdom you shared today, but also for the Hana, for the work that you do tirelessly day in and day out for the people of Lahaina and all of Hawaii. We're so glad Hokulea could come back. We're so glad we could have this moment. And we hope everyone enjoyed watching today and joining us. And mahalo nui to everyone. Ahui ho. Ahui ho. Aloha. Aloha.